Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. A very new welcome, and my name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. And today we are going to pick on my animals, if you will. Out of all of my animals, we are going to select 10 to be my easiest, most low maintenance reptiles. I have roughly 30 reptiles. So who's the easiest? So we're gonna start at number 10 and work our way to number one. Number one it being my most low maintenance animal. Now obviously I have more than 10 animals, so the animals that didn't make this list are not considered low maintenance compared to the rest of these. Coming in at number 10 are my fat-tailed geckos. Now I have three fat-tailed geckos, Yue, Suki, and Willow, and overall, they're fairly easy. They don't need a lot from me. You know, they have a pretty easy diet of smaller insects, mealworms, which I breed, so I'm not spending a lot of money there. Um, Nutra grubs, which are fairly inexpensive, easy to get, and you can store them in the fridge so they last longer. Dubia roaches, which you can also breed on your own, which I do. They don't need a humongous setup. I personally like a three by two setup, but 40 gallon breeders are kind of the common standard these days, which is pretty easy to find and pretty affordable. Now, why are they in number 10 compared to the animals we're gonna be talking about? They are a little needy when it comes to their humidity requirements. So you do have to stay on top of that. And kind of going off of that, they can be kind of crappy shedders. So one of my three, is kind of not great at shedding her toes. And toes are a common thing when we're looking at these terrestrial geckos or anything that has smaller skinny toes. You have to be very careful when they're shedding that their shed isn't getting stuck on their toes because that can cut off circulation and they can lose their toes. They are also a little more on the skittish side compared to some other geckos that we may or may not be talking about soon. So just the fact that they're a little more skittish in nature, I have to spend a little more time with them than I would some of my other animals. Number nine is my boa constrictor, my BCI Samoa. She's relatively easygoing. She really doesn't need much from me. She's pretty content with me just letting her do her thing. She only has to be fed about once a month. So overall, pretty easy. Her care requirements are easy to hit and maintain. Never had a problem with her shedding. She sheds great. In number nine, just because she is very large, She's a handful when it comes to handling. She is very food motivated. A little crazy to handle. She's not quite as calm as you see most boa constrictors being. And she has the tendency to poop in her water. Now, with most of my animals, I actually like it when they poop in their water because it's easier for me to clean. I know right away that it's happened and I can just take care of it, clean the dish, they get fresh water, their, their enclosure stays clean. So normally I like that. But with a big snake like Samoa, when she goes to the bathroom in her water dish, it just means that I'm carrying this giant water around and having to dump it out and refill it and wash it and all this stuff. So when you have a really big water bowl, bucket, basin, whatever you want to call it, it becomes a little more difficult. Coming in at number eight is my Kenyan Sanboa Tootsie. I had a really hard time placing Tootsie. I really wanted to place her higher on this list but I couldn't because of a couple things. Now, don't get me wrong, Kenyan sand boas, very easy to maintain. One of my easiest, obviously, because she made this top 10 list, she's number eight. They don't need a humongous enclosure, they don't get very big, typically, especially if you have a male, they don't get very big. Setup's pretty easy, give them substrate deep enough to burrow in and they're pretty content. Unless you have one of those crazy large Kenyan sand boas, typically, they are not gonna need a large prey item, so their prey is gonna stay pretty affordable. But why she's at number eight and I couldn't place her higher, I had a hard time getting her eating when I first got her. It was at least a couple months, two or three months, where she would not eat, uh, no matter what I tried. And eventually she just started eating again and has been fine ever since. So it was that stressful time when I first got her and she was young that she like would not eat that has me placing her lower on this scale than I would normally. Um, she also can be kind of a crappy shedder. When I kept her in a very naturalistic substrate with live plants and everything, she obviously was a much sh better shedder. Um, now she's back in Aspen and she's once again a crappy shedder. So that really doesn't have anything to do with Tootsie, that's more just the environment. 
so I am going to switch her back to a naturalistic substrate. It was harder for me to interact with her in that kind of substrate and she was dirty and just whatever. Um, so Aspen has been easier for me as a keeper and an educator to be able to get her out and interact with her. And the Aspen also lets me find her easier for feeding because when she had the naturalistic substrate, I really couldn't find her. I didn't want to uproot plants so I'd have to leave her food and hope that she'd come out and find it where with the aspen, I can find her much easier and make sure that she knows that it's feeding time. So there are pros and cons to the aspen versus the naturalistic substrate, but I probably am going to go back to the naturalistic substrate so that we can just have a better time with shedding. Number seven on this list is Kronk, my Dumeril's boa. He's another one that really doesn't need much from me. He only eats about once a month, just like Samoa. He's very easy going, very slow moving, very easy to handle. A bit lower on this list just because he is a big snake, which means they do need more space than some other animals that would be a easy going, low maintenance animal. Because he needs more space, that does make him a little bit higher maintenance. But still better than some other animals, which is why he's number seven on my top 10 list. Number six is my Western Hognose Penelope. Overall, she's very sweet, very easygoing, eats no problem. However, she did start off kind of like Tootsie where she was rejecting food when she was very young. I don't know what it is with these two baby snakes of mine. The rest of my snakes, no problem. But those two, for some reason, just wanted to like scare the crap out of me and just refuse food for a little while there. But now she doesn't miss a meal unless she's in shed. If she's in shed, then she is actually kind of rude. She's a diva. She hisses and strikes at everything and will refuse to eat. So that's the only reason that she's at number six and not higher. I would have put her much higher if it wasn't for how she acts and how she goes off food when she is shedding, which is typical for a lot of snakes, but for her in particular, it did make her drop to number six. Overall, her care is super easy. Again, small prey items because she's a smaller snake, smaller enclosure compared to other animals. So just very, very easy to care for in my opinion. Number five are my crested geckos. So I have Pip and Potato, very low maintenance, easy going. When it comes to feeding them, it really doesn't get much easier. You can buy commercial powdered diet, mix it with water, you're good to go. Occasionally feed them some insects as well but the majority of their food is going to be usually those powdered diets like Pangea, Rapashi, things like that, which makes it so, so easy to feed them. You only have to deal with bugs every once in a while. Depending on your room, you can keep them at room temperature so you don't even have to deal with heating, though I would recommend getting an enclosure big enough so that you can have a heat gradient and offer that and UVB. But if we're just talking about absolute basic care, they do well at room temperature, depending on the temperature of your room. Now, where they do require some maintenance and some more hands-on compared to other animals, is they are more of a tropical animal, requiring about a 60 to 80% humidity gradient, which means you are gonna have to take an extra step of spraying down the enclosure, maybe spraying in the morning and the evening, just in the evening, just in the morning, whatever works for you and your environment. Being in New York is very dry here, so I do have to spray my enclosures a bit more often than I would normally, or set up an automatic mister. So if you set up an automatic mister, then even more low maintenance. Otherwise, you are misting probably about twice a day. All right, we're getting into the top four. Number four on this list is the leopard gecko. So this is the one I was trying not to mention back when we were talking about the African fat-tailed geckos because I wanted to keep them separate and I didn't want to ruin that they were on this list, though you guys probably knew they would be. So number four is the leopard gecko. Very, very common gecko, especially for those just getting into the hobby. Very common first pet reptile and for good reason. Minimum standards for these guys, just like or just like African fat-tailed geckos are 40 gallon breeders. Again, very easy to get your hands on and find food, small insects, Dubia roaches and mealworms, you can easily breed yourself. Nutra grubs, very easy to get your hands on, store in the fridge. Pretty much everything we talked about with the fat tailed geckos. Just without that extra headache of the humidity requirement. And they tend to be less skittish and a little more outgoing. So, for example, if I walk in the reptile room, my fat tailed geckos are running and hiding. My leopard gecko, she'll hear me and she'll come out and come right up to the glass and want to come out. Now I have Queso set up in a three by two wooden enclosure that is completely naturalistic and have not had a problem with her shedding at all. She eats great, she poops great, 
and something that makes leopard geckos super low maintenance and there's a couple different animals that will do this but leopard geckos are a big one they poop in the same spot which makes cleaning so nice you don't have to dig around looking for all the poop they pick a spot and that is like their litter box that is their area where they're gonna go to the bathroom consistently and that's probably one of my absolute favorite things about leopard geckos it's just that she poops in the same spot which makes cleaning so easy but we are getting into my top three low maintenance pets out of the animals that i own in number three we have the ball python now i was going back and forth between the leopard gecko and the ball python for that top three spot but ultimately i do find my ball pythons to be very easy now a lot of people are like oh well they're not quite as easy as this thing maybe they're not great for beginners blah 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 i personally disagree just based off of my experience i have three ball pythons and i find them pretty easy and pretty low maintenance their temperature and humidity gradients are fairly easy to hit of course every individual is different in general they're pretty easy to handle not very defensive why they're number three on this list is probably the reason that most people say that ball pythons actually aren't a great beginner snake and that's because they can go off of food that is pretty common for ball pythons they can be picky eaters they can go off food um, and you just have to not let that stress you out you have to expect it keep track of their weight watch their health monitor their health if you're really concerned that something might be wrong seek out an exotic vet but I can tell you right now my only ball python that's really gone off food is Kalua, my bigger ball python who's in this one right behind me when I first got Kalua, he was in the middle of not eating and we were going into winter so for that whole winter he didn't eat and then um, come spring he ate again and he's only gone off food again one other time I believe it was when we moved into this house he went off and skipped like two feedings and then he's gone back on and hasn't missed any since um, my other newer ball python mojito I believe if I remember correctly I was told that he hadn't been eating that great um, maybe I'm not remembering that right but he's been eating great for me um, Snicket my banana ball python never miss a meal so of course everyone's experiences are going to be different but from my experiences ball pythons are in my top three of my most low maintenance animals top two and my top two are very very similar so in number two i have my milk snake zero colubrids in general are just fairly low maintenance animals from my experience all the colubrids i have are pretty chill pretty easy to take care of not a lot of headache very easy to set up and maintain not very picky eats great so why i have zero in number two instead of number one a couple things milk snakes are a little more skittish they're still pretty easy to handle but they can be a little more skittish um, he definitely is a little more flighty settles down pretty quick but still moves around a lot fairly flighty and they are escape artists so if you don't know the story of zero Zero got his name because I drove eight hour round trip to pick him up from somebody and I got home and opened the container and Zero was not inside. There were zero snakes in the enclosure or in the container because Zero had escaped into my car during the four hour ride home. So that is how Zero got his name. So they are escape artists. Now I have never let zero escape again after that because that was like a traumatic experience for me um for like 48 hours he lived in my car and i wasn't sure if i'd ever see him again so i'm always very like extra cautious with zero and his enclosures to make sure there's no escaping happening but overall he's very easy to set up he did great when he was in aspen he does great now that he has a naturalistic setup he never misses a meal so very low maintenance very easy for me to take care of and we get to number one drum roll please number one on my top 10 list of my most low maintenance pets is my corn snake phoenix now you guys probably expected this or had some guess that a corn snake would definitely be on this list somewhere now phoenix is one that you can do no wrong with corn snakes are just such a hardy snake but also their care is very i don't want to say basic but pretty basic pretty easy to understand 
pretty easy to get right and maintain but also if you mess up a little bit they are pretty forgiving i'm not saying go mess up their care but if you're just getting a corn snake it's your first reptile and you're a little unsure about things and maybe you don't get something quite right they're usually pretty forgiving phoenix says that never missed a meal does great in aspen did great when i switched her to naturalistic and is still doing great now she's back in aspen again because the enclosure that i currently have for her just the way that it's set up, Aspen does better inside of it than when it was natural. I would like to put her back into a natural substrate. I would just have to get a different enclosure probably. This is this one up here? The substrate barrier is quite low and the enclosure itself is just crappy, if I'm being honest. So once I get a different enclosure and I have a deeper substrate barrier, I would like to switch her back to natural because I really liked the way it looked when it was all naturally set up. But what I didn't like was that I was trying to make it deep enough for live plants and everything and dirt just kept falling out every time I opened the door and it was just, it was a mess. So we went back to Aspen because it's easier to maintain for me at this time. So even something as simple as Aspen, he does great in. I don't know if I've been saying she this whole time or he. I'm still getting used to the fact that Phoenix is a boy and not a girl. For years I thought that he was a she. So if I said she at all, forgive me, he is a he. But in terms of care and who needs what for me, Phoenix would be happiest if I just never bugged him and left him completely alone. Super easy to take care of. He was my first snake. So I can speak from personal experience that they do make great first snakes. Alright, so that is my top 10 list of my most low maintenance, easiest to care for animals from the animals that I own. Let me know in the comments below what you think your most low maintenance animals are. Because I'm really curious because I actually had kind of a hard time making this list because there were so many factors to consider that I kept swapping people around. Like I've made this list one, two, three, three times. I have my list over here in my notebook. Um, yeah, I've made this list three times before committing to this one. Um, every time I think I'm gonna film this video, I redo it. So this has probably been over like the last year that I have redone this list three times with today being the newest time and like just committing. But that is it for today's video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you for the next video. Bye.